Working on your acting from home isn't really the best choice, right? But in this day and age, in the age of coronavirus, we really don't have a lot of choice. So let's talk about the best classes and the best things that you can do for yourself as an actor while at home on this episode of Casting Actors Cast. Welcome to Casting Actors Cast. It's the podcast for actors in the business of show. Here is your host, Jeffrey Dreisbeck. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm casting director Jeffrey Dreisbach. How are you? Hope you're having a really good day today. I'm having a really good day today, and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you, uh, talking about distance learning, long distance learning. Can you really learn acting via Zoom? We're going to tackle that question and more. But first, this is that moment in the podcast where I want to say thank you so very much for joining Casting Actors Cast today. It's really great that you're here. I'm continually astounded and amazed and so delighted uh, that I've gotten so much feedback and response. And to my friends at Actors Connection, I am so grateful for the opportunity to talk about Actors Connection and share with you how wonderful this organization is. I'm not trying to do a commercial here, but if you haven't checked out Actors Connection, there are offices in Los Angeles, Atlanta, Chicago, and New York City. And they're doing an amazing job of bringing casting directors, uh, directors together with talent in a really wonderful and positive working environment. And it's really quite a cool place. So I invite you to go to uh, actorsconnection.com and check out more about that. Uh, I'm a huge fan and I teach there. In fact, I'm going to be teaching a class on um, a theater intensive class coming up fairly shortly. So if you go and you want to work with me, I'm happy to do that. Happy to work with you. So check out Actors Connection. Um, also, if you go to my website, castingactorscast.com, that's all one word, Casting Actors Cast, you can fill out the dive into the talent pool form and you'll get an option to download a free book called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voiceover workshop for professional actors. And this is a book all about doing voiceovers. During my acting days, and I was an actor and acted professionally for 20 years, made my living as an actor, I also did a lot of voiceover work. And so uh, later on, when I became a casting director, I decided I want to put a book together about doing voiceover work. And that's the effort uh, that you can get for free by going to castingactorscast.com and filling out that form. Also, if you want to email me, if you have any questions or suggestions, if you have any thoughts about future episodes, if you'd like to give me a like and a thumbs up, there's all kinds of ways that you can do that. But also, my email address is castingactorscast at gmail.com. So that's all of the contact information, and I invite you to share some questions with me if you have some, because I'd love to answer some. And guess what? We're going to be doing that right now. Okay, let's check out this week's mail. Just go to castingactorscast.com and fill out the comment form. It's easy. I got a really wonderful uh, note uh, response through the website from Fernando, and I, he writes a really interesting question, and I'm just going to, I have it right, right here on my monitor, I'm just going to read you the question as he wrote it. I won't read everything, I want to get kind of to the meat of the matter, because I think it sort of dovetails ooh, nicely <laughs> into our subject for today. Um, my favorite part of acting is collaboration, writes Fernando. I love going into the casting offices and collaborating with casting directors. Unfortunately, self-tapes don't allow me to do that. Collaborating with other actors at home, if I'm lucky, is okay, but it is simply not the same thing. I love getting the adjustment in the room from the person who knows what is being looked for and putting my spin on it, but self-tapes are here to stay and I get it. I recently submitted a tape to your office and I unfortunately missed out on some of the technical suggestions that you made in the last podcast, but I'm happy to report that I'm working on it and getting better every day. The one thing that you didn't address is the one thing that I spent most of my energy on and that is space. 
Most of us New Yorkers have small apartments and limited space for shooting auditions, and this is the biggest challenge of all, especially in the current situation with nowhere to go to record an audition. I spend a lot of energy moving my bed and other furniture furniture around to create enough space to play at least a little. An on-camera audition is easier in that respect because the frame is the frame and that is where the action takes place. In a theater audition, I want to use the space and connect my choices to the movement in that space. If I'm limited like an on-camera audition, then it just becomes an on-camera audition with words from a play. For example, I began one of my pieces lying down, and that is essential for the connection to the piece. Sure, I can choose a different piece, but I really enjoy this piece, and I want to show my strongest work. I think that theater acting requires an actor to show how they move and use the space to tell the story, unless, of course, the piece requires more stillness. In addition, you said that when two monologues are requested, as in the case of the audition that we had at Mokorkel Casting, they should be recorded separately. Well, this confuses me because I would never do that in a theater audition. I would do my piece in the allotted time, and part of that time is used to show a smooth transition between pieces, words, using the space, and time to bring the two characters to life. <laughs> and then he sweetly writes, I didn't send out to write this much, <laughs> but this has been a challenge for me and I'm appreciative of any feedback either directly or in a future episode. I'm looking forward to auditioning for your office in person one day if auditions exist, ever exist in that way again. Gosh, Fernando, that was such an involved question and really a great one, I have to say. And you're right. I really didn't spend a lot of time addressing the space concerns that a lot of actors had. But I would like to respond and answer your question and go into the subject matter of collaboration and talk a little bit about classes, uh, what classes might work for you from a distance and what classes you might not want to do because of the the distance aspect of it. In terms of space, you have what you have to work with. And so please do not think that casting directors, generally speaking, the casting directors I know anyway, don't dismiss you because the shot isn't necessarily framed correctly. I hope that makes sense. The difference between a theater audition on video and a film and television audition on video is the frame of the shot. By that I mean the frame of a shot for a theater audition should be from the waist up. Also, make sure that your camera is in horizontal position, not vertical position, but horizontal position, so that you have a little extra space either to the left or to the right of you. Ideally, you should be slightly off center when you shoot your theater audition. Because here's why. When you're slightly offset, this is really interesting to me, that the person who's observing has a tendency to pay more attention. If you center yourself in the shot, if you make it symmetrical, then there's a stronger likelihood that the person who's viewing it is going to be a little bit less interested. Isn't that interesting? I think so. So the idea is shooting yourself from the waist up can afford you to be and have a little more physicality in the audition. And of course, that's the, the, the point of it. Please remember to do a theater audition rather than knowing that you're being shot on your camera, your cell phone, that you're now thinking that you have to spray down the audition. The preferred choice is to actually see a theater audition that just happens to be videoed. I hope that makes sense. Here's the other thing that you were talking about. There are limitations of physicality, of course, and there are also limitations of your space. If you don't have a full room to do a full body shot of you laying on the ground and getting up to do the piece, I get it. That makes perfect sense. And so there is a balance to be struck weighing your environment and the environment that you have versus the work that you want to do, I think that there are some kind of creative ways that you need to compromise. I know compromise might be a bad word. I've never heard a producer or director going, oh, you know, I, that that's, it doesn't work for me because I just saw them from the, the chest up and I needed to see them from the waist up. See, that, that doesn't really happen. 
but framing yourself and, and giving yourself an opportunity to be creative with your choices and then understanding that your limitations are your limitations. And so there is no sort of right or wrong way. So relax. And if you have to lie down, for example, in a scene, there's no reason why if you ha and not having the space, you might need to compromise the choice. On the other hand, there may be a creative way in which you can shoot yourself from a, a high up end and you on the ground. And then you could certainly do a dissolve or you can do a cut, although I'm not a big fan of cutting your scenes, but there are ways in which you can show me that opening shot and then you can transition to doing the waist up or the chest up, depending upon your space. I hope that's helpful to you because there are no hard and fast rules and your limitations are your limitations. You've got to use what you've got and make the best of it. So no apologies about that, right? You just have what you have. Um, the other part of your question, which is really interesting, is the request for doing two separate pieces. And the reason that that is asked for is that sometimes the producer or the director makes a request for what they want to see. Sometimes directors don't want to see both pieces. Now, I understand part of the audition is going from one character into another, but I can assure you that if it is done uh, on video and it is two separate auditions, but you are fully immersed and fully committed to the characters that you're playing, it really is a better choice overall. Because why? It gives the casting directors a little more creative leeway on how to present the material best to the producer and the director right so that we can decide well you know the second piece isn't as strong or the second piece is really strong let's put that first and then the director's interest will dictate whether or not we show both scenes or not there may be even times where we only take little pieces of both showing the contrast between the two it really gives us that opportunity i as a casting director don't necessarily need to see how the actor goes from one character to another character that's technique, right? That's behind the scenes technique. I'm interested in seeing how you're going to play the part, how you fully invest in the work. So I think that might be a better first choice. Keeping them separate is just helpful for us. Anyway, really great question. And I, I too hope to have a chance to see your work. And I certainly would love to bring you in for an audition that you're right for. And I will certainly keep you in mind because you've been so generous with your kind thoughts and uh, your question. So thank you, Fernando, for that. So let's continue on for just a little bit more on the same kinds of subject, talking about all of the classes that are out there. Now, you know, reality dictates that the best thing that you can do for yourself as an actor right now is to really stay busy. Really do the kind of work that you can do to perfect your craft to the best of your ability. I understand how difficult that is. This is a really difficult time, especially in an industry and in a business that really depends on the interaction of two people at any given time. I get that. But here's something else to consider. What are the options available to you right now? So the way that I would suggest you look at classes that might be available or that you might be interested in is to first give yourself a checklist. And the checklist is this. What are the kinds of classes that I need now that I would benefit from now? That doesn't mean that just taking every class that shows up or just kind of picking and choosing. It really means to take a, a moment and really think about what is the best kind of information you would benefit from right now, today. So once you get through that filter, once you ask yourself that question, then you can explore all of the kinds of classes that I think are really, really useful, that are really, really beneficial. And there are some kinds of classes that are going on out there that I just frankly don't think are as helpful. There are uh, some classes that I just go like, really? How is that? How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> and then there are some classes that I think, gosh, you know what? This is like the way of the future. This is like the best way to learn this kind of thing. 
Also know that there is so much more out there available to those actors who are living in the regions, let's just say, in the middle of the country or in areas of the world, because, for example, this podcast goes worldwide, right? So there may be a way in which you can decide that you can take some classes from a New York casting director or from a New York uh, theater instructor. Maybe there's value in that for you in terms of your long-term goals. Even your short-term goals as an actor, I think taking online classes can be really beneficial. Here's why. One is the more time you spend on camera, the less likely you are to feel intimidated on camera, the less likely you are to feel like, uh, you know, this is a foreign land. When in fact, my feelings is that this kind of interaction that we're seeing because of the coronavirus is going to continue for a long period of time. Frankly, long after the virus has dissipated and people are going to feel more safe. I still think that auditions, first round auditions, uh, interviews, classes, I think this is going to stick. I think this is going to be something we're going to see for a long time to come. So wouldn't it be a good idea to involve yourself now as quickly as possible? Getting involved in some classes now are really is really helpful because you, you know what? You're not going to be in isolation as much. You're also going to be working with other talented folks. You're also going to be working with people in the industry. So there are all kinds of great choices out there. Here are some class ideas that I think are really, really useful. One, I think that doing monologue work, if you've got some monologues or you're interested in developing some monologue work, a lot of actors, you know, that are in college and university training, they can't wait to be done with monologues. But I have news for you. Monologues are not going anywhere. And I think having a monologue kind of class where you can get feedback from somebody in a classroom environment so that you can see other people's work, other actors work as well as get some feedback and some interaction on your own work is really cool and really, really helpful. I think, believe it or not, at first I had this kind of weird negative reaction about scene study classes. I thought, how the hell do you do a scene with, you know, an inanimate object? like a camera or a cell phone. How does that work? And you know what's interesting is, yes, you don't get the physicality. There are so many things that you don't get. You don't get the sort of live energy of two people communicating with each other in a scene study class. But guess what? Those are trade-offs to other things that you do get. You do get a focused concentration. You do get a clarity of choice when you do a scene study class, and it can be very, very successful. Now, the only condition on that is that you have an instructor that knows how to work with that scenario. So not all live theater or live teachers or instructors are necessarily comfortable in this Zoom environment that we are in. But nevertheless, I think that scene study can be quite successful uh, in terms of acting classes. So monologues, a scene study. We actually did a class. It turns out that I do some work for University of Connecticut, UConn in stores, Connecticut. They have a really wonderful uh, theater program and theater department there. Both Pat and I have done some teaching there. And one of Pat's classes that I helped her with this time in terms of distance was doing a puppetry class. Because uh, McCorkle Casting, we've done some work with Sesame Street. We actually put a few human beings <laughs> on Sesame Street. And so we had a screen test for Sesame Street. And ironically, we're well, not so ironically, I guess. In reality, University of Connecticut is one of the few master's degree programs in puppetry. So the head of the department was actually participating with the BFA and MFA actors to act with a quote, Sesame Street scene with a Muppet, with a puppet. And it was amazing because it's a, the camera is the environment on Sesame Street, right? So being on camera is sort of a natural thing. And it worked unbelievably well where we had a puppet uh, uh, on one channel and we had the actor who was auditioning on the other. And so it was really kind of a magical thing that worked out surprisingly well. So there are some really interesting choices for you out there. Also, I have to say, I think 
any kind of hands-on learning type of classes can be really excellent online. Uh, for example, uh, learning how to do the self-tape. I, I think that that's a really, really great uh, opportunity for you to perfect that because you we as I said this is something you're going to be seeing so why not spend a little bit of time learning how to do it really really well so I suggest you look out for those kinds of classes also I think voiceover work is really something that you could kind of get a hold of and work with somebody in voiceover work because the technology is only there to help enhance the final result not necessarily take away so those are really helpful things. Now, briefly, I also want to share with you a little bit about classes that I don't think are as helpful. And please do me a favor, correct me if I'm wrong. If you think that you've had really good experience in some of these classes that in my head, I just can't imagine they're really helpful, then please correct me because I really want to share this information. That's the whole point of the podcast, is that we can be a community of actors and talent, and we can share this information to get some feedback. But my thinking is that sometimes there are um, training classes and courses that just don't work in a distance environment. For example, um, fight choreography. You know, really hard to figure that one out when you're doing distance learning. Now, you could learn theory. Um, and you could have demonstrations and you could set up some kind of theory, uh, some kind of training rather that's helpful. But I'm hard pressed to think that it's going to be really helpful. See, I also think musical theater is really, really difficult. Now, if you have an accompanist that's recorded uh, your book, for example, if you're going to be working on some of your material and you've got a recording of an accompanist, then I'm, I think you could work with that. But I think that there are, that's also hard for a lot of people who don't really kind of grasp some of the technical aspects of that. And so learning musical theater technique or musical comedy or working on your songs, unless you have it really cleanly laid out, uh, to be helpful to you, I'm hard pressed to think that those are going to be that helpful as well. Although they might. Please, again, please, this is something that you can correct me. But shooting yourself on video, doing voiceover work, I think business of the business type classes are really, really useful. And um, the last thing I want to share about that in general is that this is a really good time for an actor to start thinking about other ways to connect. By that, I mean there are really some wonderful people that are out there that are excellent mentors for actors. Whether or not you have uh, somebody who's just guiding you, a career guidance kind of person or career coach, I think that there are some people out there who could really be useful for you, especially now. And having an interaction via Zoom or whatever your preferred method of technology is, I think that could be really, really good. I think this is important time for actors to consider having like-minded people or peers, having a group environment where they meet on a regular basis can be really, really helpful. You can talk about career plans. You could be reading plays together. So that really opens up a whole world of opportunities as well. So private coaching uh, of monologues or some scene work or, you know, whatever, private coaching is a really great idea as well. I think the technology lends itself quite well for your growth as an actor. Ultimately, I think bringing all of this up and sharing all of this information, the bottom line is to find ways to stay positive. Get rid of those negative voices in your head that are telling you how hard it is, how challenging it is. Do not let those voices dictate how you're going to proceed with a stellar career. You can have the career that you want. I'm absolutely convinced of it. It's just about finding ways to f let that creative instinct inside of you reach out and get the information and start implementing the information that you are learning, whether it's in person or whether it's distance. Because after all, the choices that you make are yours. So make good choices, challenge yourself, remain teachable. 
Those are all things that I think you're going to find are most useful for you in this weird time that we're in so that you're going to be extremely well prepared for having the career that you want when this is all over or at least when this dissipates to a point where we can get back together again. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. It's been my pleasure bringing it to you. Thanks again to Fernando. Have a great day, and we'll see and talk to you next week on Casting Actors Cast. Thanks so much. Casting Actors Cast is made possible with your support just by listening. Please like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.